So the weight from every everything from the parachute to the engines. Uh, so I hope that these aren't counted in the weight since these are being left on the launch pad. I hope that you were paying attention we were, when we were building this and uh, writing down the weight of every single part because you're going to need that information. It, you'd li it uses, uh, the formula uses the weight of the entire rocket with full fuel tanks and with empty fuel tanks. Now, for example, the weight of this rocket is 37.9, or that's the mass, I'm sorry, the mass in tons. And that is with these eight fuel tanks full. The weight with those tanks empty, or the mass, I'm sorry, is 21.9 tons. So you use uh, both of those numbers to calculate the delta V. And you have to calculate the delta V twice for this rocket because these tanks separate. With these eight tanks empty and separated and these four tanks full here, the weight is... 16.1 tons. And with these four tanks empty, the weight is 8.1 tons. Uh, you can do the calculations yourself if you want, but I'll go ahead and tell you. The delta V, the, the initial delta V, is 1,991 meters a second. The delta V that this stage gives us after uh, these boosters have been disconnected is 2,493 meters a second. The delta V required to get into a 100 kilometer orbit around Kerbin is between 4,000 and 5,000 meters a second depending on uh, how depending on uh, certain factors in your rocket, just general weight and drag and such and such, and how good of a pilot you are, how, how efficiently you can make use of the fuel. On paper, this thing seems like it could barely make orbit, but actually, it has a bit more delta V than what the calculations would suggest, and that's good. The calculations being a little bit low allows for just a bit of margin and error for the pilot. I didn't bother calculating the delta V for this orbital stage, because pretty much all this is going to be doing is deorbiting us, and that takes a fairly minuscule amount of delta V. Now, the other calculation that we need to do is the thrust to weight ratio. For that, we need to know the thrust of our rockets and the uh, mass and the mass of our rocket. So these three rockets together, each one having a thrust of 215, have a thrust of 645. And of course, the rocket weighs 37.9 tons, or has a mass of 37.9 tons, whatever. Now. The way to get the thrust to weight to weight ratio is to divide the thrust, which is 645, by the mass times 10. Doing that gives us a thrust to weight ratio of 1.7, which isn't actually optimal. It's suboptimal, but it works. Uh, you can't get off the ground at all with a thr with thrust to weight ratio of less than one. You want it around. 2, maybe 2.1 or 2.2. <clears throat> now, uh, I could improve the delta V and the thrust rate ratio by adding solid rocket boosters. Those two types, the RT-10 and the RT-B-20. This one is quite large, and this one is smaller. This one has uh, more thrust and burns longer. Blah blah, uh, but I I'm not doing that because I don't want to uh, go in and calculate the delta V and the thrust to weight ratio with the solid rocket boosters because they don't the solid rocket boosters do not display all the information that the liquid fuel engines do and that makes calculating the delta V 
more difficult. So I'm not going to do that here. And I've already tested this rocket. It can get into orbit anyway. So with all that out of the way, let's give it a name. Let's call it the... Hmm, what to name this? Undoubtedly wonderful rocket. That's going to probably crash and burn. Hmm, I'm terrible at names. You know, let's just continue. Uh, I had a series of rockets called the Hopes and Dreams. Back in version 0 0.15. So, let's call this the Hopes and Dreams 6. I think that's where we were. And save it. And I forgot to add a certain part. Uh, struts. These are very important. You can just use these struts to connect parts together. And it improves the uh, rigidity of your rocket. Like, if your rocket is just flying apart in midair, put some struts on, and that'll help. Alright, it looks like we're done here, so I'll see you on the launch pad. Alright, here we are on the launch pad, and you may notice that my screen is quite cluttered up. This, this mech jab, the ascent autopilot, vessel information, the smart ASS, orbital information, service information, ascent stats, etc etc none of this is stock Kerbal Space Program this is the mech jab mod and um, you don't need this let me just make that clear you do not need mech jab but I like to use it because it offers me all of this information you see uh, there's my thrust to weight ratio that I calculated right there there's my thrust my weight or my mass everything is just right here for me and it's a big help. If you use the Ascent Autopilot, which I'm not going to, then, uh, let's go ahead and turn that off, actually. Then it will actually display for you how much, uh, Delta V it is using while it's ascending. Let's turn that back on real quick. Right there, total Delta V expended. It will tell you how much Delta V it's using to get into orbit. So I'm going to go for a 100 kilometer orbit. I should be able to make it. All right. Now we put a uh, throttle to full. You just use the shift key for that. Shift throttles up, control throttles down, and X takes away all the throttle immediately. Now throttle up to full. The T key turns on your SAS. You need that to keep your rocket going straight. So keep that turned on. You can see down here, uh, my winglets are wiggling around. That's the SAS. Turn SAS off, they're still. They're still. Now, the R key turns on your RCS. That's those little de deals up there. SAS and RCS on at the same time, and the RCS is thrusting around. But, the RCS does take RCS fuel. The RCS does just take RCS fuel. So you want to run that only when you need it. Turn it off when you don't need it. You can also manually control RCS with the, uh, the of course, the Q and E, the roll keys, W and S, the pitch keys, A and D, the, uh, oh, what do you call it, the, just the side-to-side -side keys. And actually, you can also control it with H and I and K and J and all those keys as well to thrust in specific directions, but we shouldn't be needing to do that. For now, we're just going to turn our SAS on and take off. Alright, in three, two, one. I hit, I hit space bar and it didn't take off. Try that again. There we go. All right, we are taking off. You can see uh, 
that is our vertical speed indicator. Just gives it's just a dial gives us a pretty good estimate of how quickly we're going up. There's our there's our altimeter tells us how high we are in meters. Our surface speed indicator is there. G-force indicator. There's a throttle. Our heading indicator. All of these really uh, really helpful tools. I'll go ahead and pull up the map and pull up the uh, the attitude ball on the map because I will undoubtedly undoubtedly be making use of that as well. Now, uh, when I reach 10,000 meters above the surface, I'm going to tap the F key. Tapping F disables the SAS as long as it's held down. And along with the D key, I'm going to uh, begin slowly pitching over along the 90 degree mark to begin my gravity turn. This will help elongate my uh, trajectory while I'm still in the atmosphere. Go ahead and jettison that stage. This will help elongate my trajectory while I'm still in the atmosphere and will make it easier for me to get into orbit when I reach the desired uh, height. When I reach the desired apoapsis. I'm not going to do this perfectly, by the way. I may well run out of fuel in this stage and have to use my uh, orbital stage to complete my orbit, but that's perfectly okay. That orbital stage should have uh, over, it should have, I didn't measure, over 3,000 meters a second of delta V, and that's plenty for orbital maneuvers around Kerbin. Alright, I'm tracking my apoapsis and the orbital information up here. When it gets to 100,000, I'm going to cut my throttle. Let's see here. I'm on the second to last tank. Go ahead and pitch over some more. All right, kill it. Apoapsis at 100,570 meters. As you can see there. Now, my time to apoapsis is 1 minute and 50 seconds. When I get there, I'm going to angle straight over to the horizon, which this green ball, this green circle on my attitude ball, is my uh, heading. It is the direction that my rocket is currently traveling in. I'm going to face directly to that and burn, and that will circularize my orbit. Now I'm going to go ahead and point myself while I'm spinning like I don't want to be. Okay, I, I just did that by accident. I'm going to point myself. Let's go ahead and roll over the rest of the way so that we're straight on this 90 degree mark. Okay, I'm going to point. go ahead and point myself below the horizon just a little bit just a little bit so that I'll be ready to thrust uh, or burn when the time comes 55 seconds out you can also time warp as long as you're outside of the atmosphere you do that with the uh, you do you can do it by clicking up here or with the greater than less than keys that's a bug where it does that. I'm five, time warping at 5x. Alright, I'm 10 seconds out. And wait for it. Wait for it. Burning. Now we're going to look at the map. As you can see, there's our apoapsis. It is slightly behind us. That should be okay.